Right now, Saudi Arabia is facing a colossal problem. It's the 12th largest country by size with no lakes or rivers and very little rainfall. With the groundwater resource almost finished, scientists have warned that the kingdom may run out of water within some decades. To curb this problem, Saudi Arabia has launched many initiatives from time to time that include recycling wastewater for landscaping and fodder production and encouraging citizens to use less water. But that by itself will not solve the problem completely. That's why they've planned to build an artificial river that even surpasses the length of the Nile River. This artificial river will use pipes set underground with each pipe having a diameter of 7.3 feet. The whole network will be 7,400 miles in length, almost twice that of the Nile River. Almost 90% of Saudi Arabia is desert with no surface water resources. The growing population of 36 million needs access to clean, drinkable water as KSA has one of the highest rates of water consumption in the world. Currently, Saudi Arabia has two resources for water, desalinated water coming out of the Red Sea and groundwater, also known as non-renewable fossil groundwater. As of 2019, 60% of the country's water comes from desalination, while less than 40% is contributed by the groundwater. By far, the agricultural sector is the largest consumer of freshwater, accounting for 67% of consumption, which is satisfied by the groundwater. Due to the arid conditions of the land, agriculture only meets a third of the food demand while the rest is imported. Since the 1950s, the country has relied on treated seawater and has since come to be the leading desalinated water producer in the world, with 7.6 million cubic meters produced daily. As of October 2020, Saudi Arabia has 33 desalination plants in 17 locations run by the Saline Water Conversion Corporation SWCC. This corporation is a government-run agency responsible for producing 20% of the global desalinated water. Most of the desalination plants are spread across the west coast near the Red Sea, while very few are located on the east side. 99.9% .9 of the water for Jeddah, Taif, and Makkah comes from the sea that is still relatively near the coast. But what about the places that are far from the sea? How do they get their water? Saudi Arabia has laid out a neat but vast network of pipelines across the desert so that every person has access to potable water. The length of these existing pipes under the Saudi cities is 78,200 miles and transports 9.4 million cubic meters of water produced each day. If this water was equally distributed to the world's population, each person would receive two bottles of clean water daily. The artificial river pipeline would be another valuable addition to this already impressive network. To put this into perspective, the pipes plus the river, if laid end to end, can circle the world three times. The project will utilize anti-corrosion pipes made in KSA to support the local economy. The pipes are placed in 13-foot deep ground with a width of 36 feet and will transport the treated water from the desalination plant. The waters of the Red Sea and the Arabian Gulf are saltier than the other seas, so it takes more effort to remove this salt and convert it into a drinkable version. But what's truly impressive is that they can do it with less energy. In the past, 4 kilowatt hours of energy was needed to desalinate 1 cubic meter of water. Now it takes 2.5 to 3 kilowatt hours to create the same amount. One Saudi plant even set a record of using only 2.27 kilowatt hours to treat 1 cubic meter of water. Hey, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, you're missing out on two awesome videos each week, so hit the subscribe button to always be notified whenever we release a new video. Also, we don't know if you noticed, but we've dropped some amazing merch that you can put your hands on. It can be purchased through our website, Visionary Builds. Enough with the promotion, let's return to the video. The amount of energy consumed depends on the type of desalination technology used. This brings us to two methods of desalination used worldwide. One is reverse osmosis and the other is thermal desalination. You might have heard the term RO water purifier, RO plant and so on. RO stands for reverse osmosis. In simple terms, you take the seawater on one side and pressure it to pass through a membrane. This membrane removes ions, unwanted molecules, and larger particles, leaving behind fresh water, which is pumped to homes. Another technique uses heat to separate fresh water from seawater. This is known as thermal desalination, but its major drawback is that it's an energy-intensive process and also pollutes the environment with its CO2 emissions. In the past, Saudi Arabia was relying on thermal desalination, but ever since switching to RO, they've slashed their fuel usage by 80% and made CO2 emissions non-existent. 
However, a disadvantage of desalination is the remaining water, also called brine. This brine is heavily loaded with salt particles removed from the freshwater. It's often released to the sea, causing coastal waters to get even saltier. It's important to note here that the desalination alone won't meet future water demand. As a result, Saudi Arabia has taken several measures to reduce consumption by increasing efficiency, eliminating waste, and ending unsustainable practices. In the 1970s, as the agricultural sector boomed, so did the water consumption. Aquifer or underground water was used to meet this demand. The government undertook an important effort to map such aquifers to then drill wells for urban and agricultural use. In the image, the colored portions show you the aquifers underneath the Saudi soil. Those aquifers remained undisturbed till the 1980s as there were fewer mechanical resources and the money to tap into them. But how could there be water beneath the desert? Well, it's because this groundwater was formed millions of years ago, sitting at a depth of 300 to 1600 feet. At that time, the land and climate of the region could have been different. The country's agricultural development over the last three decades resulted in phenomenal growth in the production of basic foods. The vast tracts of the desert have been transformed into fertile farmland, creating a huge demand for water resources. Aerial images of the Saudi landscape show nowadays green farm fields thanks to irrigation. In fact, we have a video on how Saudi Arabia is transforming its desert into a green oasis, so do check that out if you can. The agricultural boom of Saudi Arabia was only possible due to government subsidies for desert irrigation. Otherwise, the cost of farming crops in a desert would be astronomical in comparison to importing them. Today, the country exports several foodstuffs like wheat, dates, dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, vegetables, and flowers to markets around the world. However, the unsustainable use of groundwater neatly depleted all the aquifer water. This led the Saudi government to end subsidies in 2016 for water-intensive crops to discourage agricultural water use. Under the Saudi vision for 2030, a national water conservation plan was launched named Katra, which is Arabic for droplet. Through the program, the ministry aimed to reduce daily per capita consumption from 263 liters to 150 liters by 2030. But the issue of saving water is beyond just making laws. The attitude of the 36 million population of the country is equally important, if not more. A study in 2023 showed that over half the participants agree that water must be conserved, but three quarters disagree that they're obliged to conserve water. An example of where this has been successful is in California. Severe drought caused many farmers to use natural groundwater, which satisfied almost 60% of the demand. However, the pumping has been largely unregulated, resulting in a serious decline in the California aquifers. This prompted Californians to change their behaviors along with the development of new technologies and devices that optimize water use. This led to an amazing reduction in water use of almost 25%. Saudi Arabia can use California as an example of how to deal with this problem. Saudi Arabia does not have an immediate water crisis, so they still have time to plan. They have a strong community system that helps unite people. This unity can transform into a positive collective action to save a crucial resource for the upcoming generations. Despite the concern 97% of the Saudis have access to drinkable water, the creation of the artificial river will enhance this number even more. To increase the private sector's participation and diversify its revenue, KSA aims to increase the number of desalinated plants owned by the private sector. The eventual goal of Vision 2030's water sector privatization is to raise as much as $200 billion through privatization and private-public partnerships. This will not only create thousands of jobs, but also assist Saudi Arabia in shifting its dependency on oil revenue. The water scarcity isn't unique to Saudi Arabia. Other countries like Egypt are also tackling it. In a similar fashion, Egypt's planning to build an artificial river stretching up to 108 miles for $5.2 billion. This river is designed to cultivate more than 3,500 square miles, utilizing water from the treatment facility and some portion of the groundwater. In the same way, Afghanistan is also building an artificial river called the Kashtepa Canal to irrigate its dry northern plains. Perhaps we'll be seeing more and more water-starved countries adopt this pattern in the future. Countries that otherwise don't have a natural water distribution system like inland lakes or rivers are now using technology to create them. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. We're committed to releasing two videos each week, so your support means a lot, and we'll see you in the next video.